Hello, welcome to Rogues and Romances, a Twice Rolled Tales production. Uh, we're using Regency Call of Cthulhu, although we're leaving aside some of the more Cthulhu-esque aspects in uh, favor of the investigation parts of the evening. Uh, I am Winnie Shell. I will be your keeper today. Uh, I have some lovely people with me who will introduce themselves. Uh, I am Elliot Davis, playing Randolph Horsefinder, aka Bones. I am Rowan McStay, playing Lenora Blackwell. I am Phoebe Zimmer, playing Miss Anne Waldron. I am Jasmine Malave, playing Sally Gibbs, playing Mary Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Last we left our story, uh, Sally had successfully uh, made her way in, disguised in a purloined dress. Uh, Bones, accompanied by Jessica Willoughby, the sister of the dearly departed Bolter Willoughby, uh, are making their way around the house. Uh, Lenore has been kind of lovingly kidnapped by Hust- <laughs> uh, what's his name? By Hubert, Hubert Fenton, uh, who is the inheritor of this estate. Bolter uh, Willoughby having died and it gone to his nearest male heir of legal majority over the age of 21. Uh, accompanied by his her brother, uh, Leighton Blackwell, who's not having a great time, but people are paying attention to him. Uh, <laughs> something. And we also have Anne Waldron, who did not want to be here and came out of social politeness and is now perhaps deeply regretting that moment. Uh, as you enter the ballroom, as you find yourself faced with the specter of your past, there with his beautiful young wife on his arms, uh, your mind casts back to a summer's day not so very long ago when you first laid eyes on Mr. Robert Hargrove, a charming man uh, who was introduced to you via your aunt as part of her collection of friends that would come by, uh, and at first seemed the specter of generosity and gentlemanship. Um, and as, as the summer months went on, began to slowly win your heart until one day. What does Anne think uh, when you see this man who has promised to marry you, told you to keep it secret, and then threw you away for all the world to see, hear, and know about the instant his inheritance was threatened? I think the first thing that pops into Anne's head is the 250 pounds that were sent to her in a letter informing her they were no longer engaged. He, you can see it in his eyes. He looks at you and there's a little bit of fear there. But also, she is surrounded by many, many well-dressed fancy people at this ball and <laughs> would hardly be within the realms of propriety to cause a scene. So, um, I think seeing she's going to try to direct all of her attention away from Robert, uh, to just, th I guess his now wife, um, to be like, I do hope you're enjoying this and you're enjoying yourself, Mrs. Hargrove. This is, is it not so wonderful? Such a well-appointed ballroom. Uh, says, ah, uh, oh yes, I don't, don't believe we've been introduced. Uh, Robert, this is... Oh, it says, ah, uh, this is, uh, Anne Willoughby. And <coughs> this is Anne Blackwell. No, wait, sorry. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> Rob. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> says... Oh, um, sorry, dear. This is Anne Waldron. She's, she's local here. So good of you to c come down. To, I, I know you've, I've heard of you and know you're used to much um, more regal climates. Oh, no, of course. I'm so sorry. I can't say the same, but I mean, it's delightful that you look, you look so gorgeous. Um, it's, it's a beautiful ball and I'm just, I'm so excited to get to the dancing. Can you give me a psychology? Of course, that's the one I make. Robert did not tell her who you are. <laughs> she does not know. Also, is that you know, a honestly, bitchy dig? That's like, better. you're not usually in regal places? It's a little bit of a yeah, bitchy okay. dig, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, maybe she and Robert deserve each other. Mm. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, she, um, she doesn't know. Honestly, 
<laughs> what a relief. <laughs> it would have been ten times more awkward. <laughs> Uh, um, but you can see, like, she's yes. she's picked up on something. She will be asking him later. Yeah, okay. Uh, but she seems to have given me a very clear out in mm-hmm. this conversation, which also, what a relief. So, oh, I will not um, stand in your way, and I'm going to uh, sort of pull Mary aside. She's like, oh, okay, it was lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Uh, and you, you remember the buckle of this, because it became public pretty much immediately, that Anne had entered into a secret engagement. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't necessarily the engagement, and Robert breaking it would have been, like, it looked bad to him, but the fact that she kept it secret, and then also, what was wrong with her that he broke off the engagement so suddenly? So between the secrecy and the broken engagement, she's been sort of... Lots of rumors. Damaged goods, um, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So you you kind of see, hear this happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, You see the pots kind of come up, as this is ending, and are just like, whoops. I follow behind to kind of give the impression mm-hmm. of being in the group. <laughs> 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 and, yeah, so you all you all enter the, the, the ballroom proper. Uh, it is a vision of silver uh, and uh, embroidery, and it's just lots of like glass uh, ball balls and things hanging, reflecting the candlelight all across the ballroom. Uh, there's an enormous chandelier it's clearly been strung with drapery uh, to match the event. Um, it's, so it, it's a two-story ballroom and with enormous uh, frescoes above it, uh, like the heavens, and then there's large glass windows that lead out into the back lawn. There's a portico porch here, which you guys can see. And you can see people like enjoying, relaxing around, um, and hanging out there. And, and you can see the, the magicians are getting ready. They're, so they're about to call a dance. Um, so everyone should, if they're interested in dancing, should be looking to partner with someone. Um, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'm gonna like wander into the center of the room, just looking around. <laughs> um, you, so, so you you come in. Yeah. Um, Has Hubert like led us to the ballroom? Yeah. Let's, I sort of am just following. I, I his think lead. they're here. I think everyone. I think everyone's made it to the ballroom at this point. Great. Um, assuming you guys would like to continue into the ballroom. Uh, what is N- Nigel oh, doing Nigel, with the birds? Oh, uh, Nigel was going to assign the footman to clean the foyer, <laughs> and then Nigel, I directed to, um, Nigel, you know the room where I, uh, where Bolter kept my gifts, uh... Oh, yes, yeah, security room. Of yes, course, sir. Uh, please, uh, drop the birds off there. Okay. Great. See Nigel is gonna go here, which means... So this is the main parlor and the secondary parlor. Mm. We'll see how this goes. This is a fun thing. Here and mm. with the names up oh, now. That I'm oh. <laughs> there we go. Pretty slick. Very nice. Pretty slick. Uh, great. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Somebody's um, clever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you see Nigel, Nigel goes in here, and yeah, people are getting ready to call the first dance. Um, I see a gentleman comes up and he says, Oh, um, I don't believe we've been introduced, but would you give me the honor of this dance? I, I would love to dance with you, but I think we should perhaps get to know one another. I'm, um, Miss Mary Gilbert. Yes, um, I am Mr. Graves. Uh, Lovely to make your acquaintance. Uh, and and I yours. Give me a, give me an etiquette check. <laughs> Come on, Sally. <laughs> Come on, Sally. <laughs> uh, These dice are crushing it. I did. I I did it. Yeah. Yeah. I you did, did it. That's a two. It's a wow. Two. A two. Yeah. A wow. Two. Wow. Okay. Um. Give me a roll a d six. Um. Oh, to your increase room. your reputation. <laughs> Very nice. Three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you get, you increase your reputation. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, Jasmine's so reputation is, is now 69. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Mr. Graves. Yeah, he seems like a reasonably well-to-do gentleman. Um, kind of edging in on my territory there. Bones Graves. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll get along. You better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll get along. 
Uh, so he he offers his hand for the dance. Oh, and I'm dancing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really wanted to have said that out loud. <laughs> oh, and I'm dancing. I think you probably, yes, I, I think it'll be, but maybe a little less awkward. But like, oh, yes, I, I'm dancing Same. then. Uh, you see... Uh, a gentleman come up and ask Mary for a dance. Yes, I shuffle her a lot. Uh, and and so essentially, you can introduce yourself and ask for a dance, but if you would like to speak to them outside of that, you have to go find one of their acquaintances that you know who can introduce you. Mm. Um, Whoa. There's technically more rules involving a master of ceremonies in all of this. We're not doing that. <laughs> you can ask someone to dance on the dance floor. That's fine. Okay. Uh, that's there. Um... I think that uh, hearing this, Hubert turns to Lenore and says, care for this dance? You know, that would be wonderful. I will warn you that I'm quite a terrible dancer, but um, if you'll have it, I shall take it. Great. Your plan failed right away. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's married. Yeah, he's friend. married. Yeah. 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 I'll dance with married people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's married, and I might get information from him, so this is actually perfect. <laughs> This is why Lenora is here. Yeah, yeah this is, this is no why. risk, no yeah, risk but... of betrothal, and also information. <laughs> uh, you see that your brother has also been commandeered into this dance. Oh, by Isabella. Yes, by Ooh. Isabella. She's she's got like a death grip on him. Her hair is still all over the place, and everyone oh is God. giving her the side eye, but she's so unwilling to let go of Leighton um, <laughs> and like release him into the rest. Cause you can see as news has spread of who he is, a couple of other women, other people are uh, starting to side eye him. Is Isabella, can I roll a psychology to see how Isabella's feeling about Leighton? Yeah, yeah. Like I know, she, like I'm just- Like is she looking uh, for an affair or a gay best friend? You know what's yeah, that's yeah. pretty <laughs> bad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I want to push it. Um, <laughs> Psychology? I'll push it. All right. Um, I, I'll push it and I'll, I'll kind of like try to just edge like a little bit closer <laughs> on the dance floor to try to gauge like a perception a little bit better. Oh, great. 16. Great. So okay. that's a um, almost pass. a hard, yeah, hard pass. Look, Leighton is a messy slut anyway. Like, I, <laughs> like, we know, you know that about your brother. Certainly. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> Isabel is... She's more interested in just like being seen with and she wants like more the prestige of being mm. known. Um, if Leighton wants to make a move, we can see where that goes, but she's more for, in, for the, in, enjoying this prestige she's suddenly being granted as, Beautiful. you know, mistress of, of, uh, of Redworth. So not, you know, she's just kind of hanging out. Um, great. And then as we pass by them, sort of, uh, in, get it, like, lining up for this dance, I'll just sort of corner of the mouth. Leighton, it seems that our friend, Miss Fenton, has taken quite a shine to you. Perhaps use this to get a little bit of um, research done for your book. What an excellent idea, Sister Mine. Uh, and I see you're dancing. I'm attempting to dance. <laughs> we'll see how it's going. Fantastic. I can't wait to tell Mother. <laughs> uh, so, um, Anne, you're walking along. Um, yeah. Anne is going gonna, is gonna to turn to the pots and just be like, I fear my presence here will not to be doing Mary any favors. Uh, excuse oh. me. And is going to leave the ballroom. <laughs> so really they kind of like reach after you and like the no, don't go. Mm -hmm. Like we, we want to comfort you, but also yes, please leave. Yep. <laughs> please, we care about oh, you, no. but also we'll care about you not here where yep. we're trying to get our daughter married. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So hang out. Um, did Jessica and I clock that? Um. Clock this introduction. Clock Anne leaving. I, I think so. I think a lot of eyes are on Anne. Anyone because it's notably the opposite direction of dancing. It, it's notably the opposite direction of dancing, and I think Jessica would have noticed um, that, like, noticed Anne be upset. She knows Anne, even if she doesn't recognize Hardgrave, um, Hardgrove. Uh, you know, she would she would know of Anne's situation, kind of guess that something's gone wrong. So yeah, I, I think you clock. And where's where's Anne going from here? Um, I would like to find the quietest room. Uh, if there's like a study or a library or, or, or barring any of that, I guess, like a balcony, it's anything that's just like, uh, I can go to this place and there will be no people. Well, you're at a ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the sense that upstairs is probably pretty quiet, mm -hmm. although you're not allowed upstairs. 
Um, the dining room is relatively empty. There's a few servants moving stuff in and out. But there's no one here, but it's the center of the room, so you could be interrupted at any yeah. moment. Um, and then, so there's an art gallery here. There's a couple of people you don't know very well. These are hill graves. Mm -hmm. um, and you also hear all that. You hear a cacophony of macaws. Uh, <laughs> and, and you Just see uh, the, you see, uh, you see Annette Fenton and Leopold Fenton leave the room as soon as the macaws with natural <laughs> come in uh, in a great huff going over here and uh, you you know they seem to be talking this is this is the son the second son of um dirt bike kids this is the dirt bike this is the dirt bike one of the dirt bike kids this is the second son of hubert fenton um so he would not be in line to he'd be the second in line to inherit redworth mm -hmm. Where his father die, and this is Annette Fenton, who is his grandmother. So this is the mother of mm. uh, Hubert Fenton. So they pass there, and see it's just Nigel and the birds in this room. But otherwise, the foyer seems to be kind of clear at this moment. You know, I don't have a problem with Nigel or the birds. I far prefer yeah. the birds to the people right now. Um, I think I will. Go in there and and it's like oh oh that is that is more birds than I thought was gonna be but they're in the cage right now right oh yeah sure they're okay. they're not going anywhere they're just uh, not until Mister Bones does the whistle it's a dread whistle but <laughs> oh, um I'll keep an ear out for the whistle <laughs> so you're dancing you're hanging out there Nigel's just kind of hanging out with the birds yeah. you get the sense he's sort of like setting them up and he might head out soon mm -hmm. that's there I'm I'm just gonna kind of like look around the room and, and, act, and, you know, act like I'm here because I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you walk into the room, you see, this is one room that clearly is left over from the Volter Willoughby days. Mm -hmm. It is an enormous collection of things that Bones has brought back and things that he has collected. There are stuffed animal heads from almost oh, every God. continent. Uh, an enormous collection of books and rocks and instruments of all kinds. And it seems like they haven't redone this room, mostly because... Everything is very rare and valuable that's in the room. And it's not something they would necessarily have gotten themselves, but I mean, if you have a ready-built curio room, maybe you just leave it as it is. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Um, Can I take a look at the instruments? Yeah. Uh, give me a, a science check. I or have a music art. skill. Yeah, Can give I me a music that skill. to, like, in investigate the instruments? Yeah. <gasps> Whoa! It's a one. It's a one. <laughs> Great. Well, here's the thing. They're all wow. mostly scientific instruments. Oh, I um, oh. but <laughs> oh no! I thought they were musical. <laughs> no, you play one. No, 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 yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Of course. Um, yeah. So actually, uh, you're kind of disappointed to see that a lot of this these could also are just be a regular. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is music. Uh, okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, gonna steeze this. Uh, so you so you eagerly go investigate these instruments. You see like a glass harmonica. You see a couple Ooh. of. Um, you know, rare instruments that are made out of, like, specialized materials. He has, like, glass flutes, things that are, um, you know, clearly he's custom-ordered to see, like, what kind of effect that this will have and change the sound and that. Um, and as you're looking around, you notice that the cabinets don't quite line up in a certain area. Um, and you go and there's a section of, um, you know, books about housekeeping and the grounds and sort of how to keep a good kitchen mm -hmm. sort of thing. Uh, and you see that one bookcase is slightly ajar. Uh, and as you walk closer, you realize it is a full swinging door bookcase. Mm -hmm. And you can hear the sounds of singing and kind of busy work behind there. Oh, yeah, that would be you. Easy escape. <laughs> um... I'm gonna look over at Nigel and be like, is he looking? Uh, Nigel looking? Nigel's just with, it looks like Nigel's with the birds. Nigel's with the birds. Uh, I roll a stealth to slip through the passage? Yeah, go for it. I will spend two luck points <laughs> to make that. 
And luck points just change the value of the roll? Yes, yeah, so you can't use them for pushed or damaged ones, but okay. you just, yeah, so they just, um, you can use you and spend take them. take them down from there and out. Yeah, but you just don't or, get or them. subtract you don't, them. You subtract them. You just don't get them back. Copy. And if you need to make a luck roll, yeah. and you've spent all just your luck points. Oh, and that's for the extent of the whole adventure? Yeah. Um, it's, so it's, it's it's for investigation phases. So for our purposes, yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So you, you, like, at the end of each adventure, you'd re-roll these things. Because a lot of Cthulhu is meant to go for like months in a time in-game. Yeah, yeah. So I would just kind of say... We're not doing anything that lasts months, so you live with your stats. <laughs> All right. Wow. What are, what are you rolling? Oh, Jasmine, Jasmine, just rolled, Jasmine just rolled her luck. It's an 80. I mean, Wait, that, you, that, that tracks. Luck? Uh, yeah. You roll for your luck stat. Yeah, you roll for luck. Oh, I thought it, I thought luck was a mechanical thing. It, no, but you roll how lucky you are. And you That's use right. those yep. lucky yeah. points. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah, all right. I did that, yes. Yep, for sure. Yeah. I mean, everyone is 100% I did that. Yep. Uh, I mean, honestly, it makes sense for Jasmine's character to be that lucky. True. Yeah. True. All right, so you, you pull on this bookcase. Uh, it is well-oiled, and you enter into a small, narrow passageway, um, which you realize leads directly to the kitchens. And Wow. Um, and so you realize that this is what they use to deliver mm-hmm. food to the dining room to keep mm-hmm. out of the area of everyone else. There's a small hidden, hidden door, and they come out of the curio room and deliver food here. That's why awesome. there was food coming out of the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I might just sit quietly in this passage for a little <laughs> oh, bit. Oh my god, that Anne. tracks. <laughs> Sweetheart. <laughs> oh no. Protect Anne. <laughs> So we're going to get mm-hmm. Robert, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, you can see Robert and his wife join the dance, and the musicians are just about to start up. So you see a couple of other Hilberts. Uh, you see, or Hillgraves. Um, Hilberts. I can. Uh, you see a couple of other Hillgroves are around. You see Quentin Hillgrove. He's the youngest son. So he's uh, you know, 23 right now. Um, and then... One of this is Savannah Davidson, who is also the eldest Hillgrove sister, who is the oldest sister of Quentin. Um, this is one of the husbands who married one of the sisters, uh, Joanna. This is Joanna Hillgrove's uh, husband. Yeah, some some Hillgroves floating around, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, is it Hillgrave or Hillgrove? Yes. I think there's Hill, it's Hillgrove and Hillgrove. Yes. Har Hargrove. I have those opposite. Yeah. So it's yes. Hargrove. Robert is Hargrove. Mm-hmm. And there's Hillgraves. And Hillgrave. They're Hillgroves too. Oh. It's Hillgroves and Hargroves. Hillgroves and Hargroves, got it. Oh, everyone's yeah. a grove. A lot of groves. Everyone's a grove. Okay, Copy great. Down. Good to know. Um and then there's Mr. Graves, who's dancing with Sally. Yes, got it. Yes. Alright. Uh, um, <laughs> Sally's gonna mess this up. <laughs> Which is fine because I'm messing it up too. <laughs> uh, Sally's got 80 luck points. <laughs> I think she'll be fine. Okay. She's killing it actually. Um, Bones and Jessica join the join the dance mm-hmm. as well. You can see Jessica sort of side eyeing uh, Quentin. She's like, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you later. It's mm-hmm. not my favorite. Just not my favorite the, family. Um, what's the story with uh, young Miss Waldron? It's, ter- it's terribly tragic. Uh, as this is happening, the dance starts up. Uh, okay, so the way this is going to work, everyone's going to roll a dancing check. Mm. If you pass, you can talk to your partner. <laughs> if you fail, you got to wait to the next round of conversation. Okay. Question. Yes. I did design my character to fail dance checks. However, yes. I also designed my character to listen. Yes. If I fail the dance check, can I still try to overhear conversation? Yeah, I think anyone who fails can try to right. overhear stuff. Um, <laughs> and like, it's not so you can't attempt to keep talking. Great. It's probably just not going <laughs> to go, go well. Great. Uh, okay, give me a dancing check. You should have dancing as oh, a wait, skill. Okay. Uh, oh, a four. Nimble. I, I am wow. the only person here who's any good at dancing. <laughs> Uh, and you do, you do get advantage. Anyone with a reputation above sixty gets advantage on this roll. Not you. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a four. We're chilling. Yes. Oh, nope. That's a fail. A fail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hubert says, <laughs> "Oh, six. <laughs> six in dancing. Yeah. <laughs> oh Wild. no. What's your reputation? Um, fifty-seven. 
Oh man, you just don't make that. <laughs> yeah. Terribly sorry, Mr. Um, Fenton. Terribly sorry, Mr. Fenton. I, I did try to warn you. I do have two left feet. <laughs> oh, that's that's all right, Miss Blackwell. We'll, we'll muddle through. Thank you so much, darling. It's left and up and up and. Okay, which left? Oh God. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get my lefts and rights a bit confused sometimes. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, I'm doing the best I can to keep up right now. Oh, you, did you make it? No. Mr. <laughs> 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 goes like, oh, all right. Um, so it's, it's my it's left first ball. Yep. Oh, congratulations! With who did you come? I'm counting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jessica, effortless. Uh, oh yeah, Bones <laughs> yeah. is like Jessica. We are like the gazelles crossing the prairie and just like dancing through other couples and like not missing a beat. No, you're supposed to, you're supposed to dance with the bones. There we go. It's, it's a public dance. It's the wilds out here, Jessica. We have to make our own way. <laughs> and we look damn good doing it. That is a truth. It is a truth. <laughs> she says, so, um, Miss Waldron entered into an unannounced engagement. Uh, his mother didn't approve, and they wanted to wait till he reached his majority, and this would be not barred from his inheritance. And the details are not clear, but he reneged on his promise. Uh, leaving Miss Anne uh, heartbroken, alone, and open to uh, you know, society's ridicule mm. for the past year or so, which has been not easy. I've spoken to her aunt on many occasions, but. Sounds like some uh, anti shit. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't prescribe to English. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes you sense. can see you're dancing Bones next to... Bones lives by the law of the sea. <laughs> Bones is a fucking champ. Oh, are you guys dancing right next to them? You guys are dancing <laughs> right next to them. <laughs> <laughs> they Just going like... right through them like sounds like some uh, anti-winning <laughs> shit. <laughs> you, can see, you can see that Robert Call turns her his Jessica, head. Like, like, just, <laughs> she's, she's like, they overhear almost all of this. Oh yeah, Bones um, has a volume issue. <laughs> God. Oh, no, his wife, his wife now officially has yeah, no, she questions. Mm. God. Mm. Can I roll a listen check to yeah, just absolutely. overhear <laughs> everything that's happening? Like, I want to overhear this whole line of conversation. Yeah, yeah. give me a listen check. From over on the side, you're just hearing oh, one, two, God. three, four, one, that's two, three, really four. That's really good. Um, yes. Hold on, listen. Where is it? I'm not used to this game. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, no. There. Okay. Thank you so much. That is an extreme success. Oh, Ooh. hell yeah! You're <laughs> bad like ears. I just want to hear everything that everyone talks about. You've so thoroughly moment. distracted your partner with your bad dancing <laughs> that he's not even trying to make conversation. He's just trying to keep you alive. Thank you so much, Hubert. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mister. <laughs> thank you so much, Mister Fenton. Uh, so of course, and uh, yeah. So you hear all of the conversation that Great. Uh, Jessica and Bones are having for sure. Uh, you also hear sort of furtive whispers that uh, Beatrice is now giving to her husband, mm -hmm. uh, Beatrice Hardgrove and uh, Robert Hardgrove, respectively. Uh, just like, what? Robert, what is she talking about? It's, I thought this was just someone from when you came to visit here. This, this does not, Robert. And he's just like, we're just, I'll tell you, I'll tell you later, let's just keep dancing. It's fine, she doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like, this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you immediately get the sense that these two know, they know what's up in this house. Great. Um, oh, and we've already kind of made friends. Yes. Perfect. Yes. So, you, so you get the sense you know what's up. Um, you, you hear Leighton uh, desperately trying to describe the book to his <laughs> mom. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's gonna be quite a secret. Um, it's it's uh, just very secretive and secret. <laughs> yes, Leighton, well done, darling. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging on to every word. Um, You're so clever. <laughs> uh, you hear that the dance is not going so well with Sally. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sally. Uh, and Miss Potts and uh, Spencer seem to be hitting it off delightedly. Great. Uh, he's kind of 
complaining about his mother uh, and, and how she's a little bit uptight in a very polite way. Well, you know, it's it's one thing to uh, expect everyone to be formal on certain occasions, but sometimes, you know, if, if it's just family, we can let down our hair. You know, metaphor. I mean, you have hair to let down. I don't. But you know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just to 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 to, to be free a bit. It just I believe in formality, but it feels like sometimes mother stands on too much of it, and Mary's just like trying to keep up and dancing and, and having honestly a really great time. They're two young people having a great dance. Completely oblivious to the second <laughs> half of this conversation. Uh, as you keep dancing, you see that uh, uh, Robert and Beatrice abruptly break off from the dance and sort of head out. And Ooh, oh, is it yeah. like a salty break off from the dance? It's more like she runs off. Ooh. And he goes after her. Oh. Finally, more room! <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. about that Robert. <laughs> wow. You, go, you see everyone turn to, to see them go out. That's so stressful. Um, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You're telling me! <laughs> You're not here! <laughs> yeah, because I'm having a panic You're attack in the middle of the hallway! As they leave bones is like, oh, that was that was the engagement. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> it's a party. It's a party. Uh, give me, uh, give me an etiquette check. Oh, you know I'm bad at that. <laughs> oh Lord. That's <gasps> almost not a failure. It's a twelve, uh, but my etiquette is an eight. Ooh. Um, and uh, I might spend some luck points. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 I'll That's spend so I'll spend uh, four luck points to get down mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, bones to, needs to not burn through. <laughs> Me as Bones medic guy <laughs> needs to let him not burn through all his reputation. His, his reputation. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, so you uh, you can s you get the sense that. It, it, instead of drawing attention, your loud proclamation to continue dancing has sort of brought the mood back mm. and has allowed everyone to sort of pretend they didn't see it. And everyone's like, oh, yes, that, that worked out very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're, you know, like, social grace is speaking. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> quickly, as passing by Bones, let's save Mr. Bones. Oh, well, one, two, three, one, two, <laughs> <Did> three. <you? laughs> Sorry. Be the gazelle. Oh, I'm trying. What, what is a gazelle? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk after. Sounds good. <laughs> Four, five. Wait, there's only three. <laughs> shit, shit, shit is the inner model. <laughs> Dance ends. Mercy. Mer 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 Thank you. We're well, so sweating. Mm -hmm. Uh. <laughs> Jessica gives you a little bow, so you alight, both light on your feet. Um, you get the sense that the hard, hard groves are already in the social doghouse. It was not particularly well done of them. Ooh, um, and yeah, and you're, you're the, everything, everyone breaks up. Spencer bows to you. I would like to give uh, a nice, like maybe a, a too much of a curtsy. <laughs> Which is quite a lot of fun. Thank, I thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, Miss Gilbert, my pleasure. Uh, and he walks off. Perfectly polite. You don't get the sense he's gonna ask you to dance again. Great. <laughs> um, <You shouldn't>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Happens. Yeah. So you're all just kind of intermingling. Um, you see Leighton like trying to foist uh, comes up to you and uh, Hubert Fenton just trying to foist Isabel back on to her husband. <laughs> It was a lovely dance. Yes, of course. We got, who's talking to me? Uh, <laughs> your question. Uh, Leighton's talking to you, trying right. to get you. It's like, <laughs> hey. Ooh, You're having a good time. Absolutely delightful. Wonderful. You had some good good conversation. Uh, absolutely. We were talking about my new secret book. Oh, yes. The secret book project. What's it called again? It is um, The Poisoned Inheritance. Oh, you know what? That's... Interesting. I remember the last time that you were talking to me about it. I believe it was actually called Traitor's Inheritance. Oh, have you changed the working title? No. Mr. I was just, I, I, you know, uh, 
The mind of an artist is always scrambled. He, ideas float in and out, and uh, someday it's one thing, and someday it's the other. So it is both the poison inheritance and the traitor's inheritance. Fascinating. Yes, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Fenton, uh, um, my brother is, is really looking forward to, to this new release. I'm sure that you've kept up with all of his other works, and so we're, we're quite excited to be sharing. The poison happen was a triumph. Uh, Isabel says to Leighton and also to you. Yeah, uh, I think Lenora like just barely holds back a thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And says, well, I wouldn't want to deprive the rest of your guests, uh, the uh, artistic wonders of conversation. (laughs) Thank you for this dance. And please. (laughs) Um, I think uh, Bones grabs Leighton and is Mm -hmm. like, did I hear you mention poison? Are you familiar with poison it's spiders? A, it's a secret! Poison snakes? It's a secret! There are even poison lizards. I can't possibly speak to that. I have a have, few ideas I for your you. poison book that you're writing. Yes? Yes, so, we should excuse, talk. Have we been introduced? Ah, yes, Mr. Bones. Horse finder, if you want to be formal. <laughs> um, can I, like, extricate politely? Uh, excuse me, I, I may need to have a word with my brother. Um, he's not yet had the opportunity to meet Mr. Bones, and I want to provide a formal introduction, if you don't mind. Oh, um, it, uh, Hubert says, oh, of course. Uh, Isabel, do you want to maybe take a, a moment? Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> and you can see Isabel, like, reach her hands up, realize she's been dancing with macaw hair. Oh, God, no! <laughs> in front of full society for the past <laughs> ten minutes, and just head held high. Leave. <laughs> just absolutely uh, disappear uh, for a moment, and you see Hubert goes off. Um, uh, Leighton, darling, I, I don't think you've had the pleasure of meeting uh, Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones, Leighton, uh, my brother, uh, noted novelist. Uh, yes. Mr. Bones, you're. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with your uh, goings on. Profession? Sure. Ah, yes, I am a, a, an explorer and a procurer of uh, magnificent beasts from around the world for England's gentry and, you know, royalty and the like. Lenora lights up. <laughs> that is fascinating. Yes, really? I was just telling your brother, um, poison caught my caught my, uh, caught my ears, and uh, there's plenty of poisonous creatures from all over the world. Did you know that there is actually a poisonous fish there's south a, of the equator? A poisonous, poisonous fish? Poisonous fish. You know what it's called? Ah, uh, yes. The, uh, Lenora's, like, scrambling in her hair for a, like, pen, and they, like, pulls one out of, like... <laughs> You know what it's called? Ah, uh, yes, it is called the, uh, the poison fish. <laughs> yes. Fascinating. I named it, actually. Exactly yes. what it says on the tin. Yes, like, see it. absolutely. <laughs> yes, are you, uh, you find interest in animals and poison and, and such, like your brother? Yes, absolutely. Fascinating. Um, I'm mostly just a, a fan of my brother's work. Sure. Um, very excited about, uh, poisons and mysteries and all things, uh, you know, sort of fascinating and, yes. um, unfamiliar. So I'm Wonderful. just be very Wonderful. curious Wonderful. to hear. Well, uh, you should take a look at the macaws if you haven't. Uh, or as well, you guys are talking about that, what what is Sally and Anne doing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to I can say that like I've kind of been pacing up and down this hall, yeah. and while I'm here, can I in here? Can I make like a listen check to see if I can hear? Anything going on in the adjoining, like the adjacent yeah, room? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Love a yeah, that sweet little hallway. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That, that is, is a today. hard pass. Hard pass. Nice. Let me see. Let me just double check who is this. Today. Hard pass is a very funny way to say, like, a hard hard pass. Pass. That's the better Here's success. Yeah. Uh, hard pass. Oh, that's a hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Uh, one of the sons, or one of the husbands who married into the Hillgroves, mm-hmm. and this is Jane Hillgrove, um, the mm-hmm. youngest sister. Uh, mm-hmm. Older only than, oh, the only person older that she's older than is Quentin. Okay. Uh, but she is not the Hillgrove that he mar- is married to. No. So that's her brother-in-law. This is her brother-in-law, yeah. yeah. So you, you, there's honestly like a little, like, almost like a little specific bolt hole so you can spy <gasps> through it. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> You're getting the sense that this house had secrets. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can hear uh, hear Jane say, "Well, I just I just don't know what came over her. Uh, I mean, she was so so delighted to come to the ball. Um, I mean, I know that it it was not enormously great uh, time. I think there last time that they were here, uh, there was 
a lot of uh, inter-family strife. Um, I'm sure, you know, mo mother filled you in on some of that, but, I, you know, Hester seemed so delighted and came in. Uh, she danced for a little bit, and, and, and then suddenly I found her in, in the study crying with mother, absolutely inconsolable. She won't tell me what's going on. Um, and I, I, I don't know, we haven't received any word. No, one, no family is ill. And so I can only assume it's something that happened here, but I am completely, I, I have no idea what's going on. She won't talk to me. Or she just, I don't even know where she, I think she's still maybe in the parley crying, but other than that, um, I don't know, if you could get Su Susanna to come talk to her. Susanna doesn't always listen to me, but I think perhaps that, that maybe, um, mother isn't always the kindest and comforting, and if I were alone in a parlor, I mean, perhaps I would not want our mother to be the only voice of solace and comfort. Um, of course, I don't want to distract and draw more attention, so if you would obliquely and quietly grab Susanna, I think that uh, Hester would find that comforting, and perhaps we could figure out what was wrong, because she really does seem quite upset. Uh, and you hear uh, Gilbert you know, agreeing that he's going to go do this, and heading off mm. um, back to the ballroom. And you see Joanna follow shortly afterwards. And you would, you vaguely recognize, um, you actually don't recognize either one of them, um, but from context you get that they are members of, like, the Hillgrove family, mm -hmm. um, who you have seen some of them about in town, yeah. but not them specifically. I would like to sort of come back into the curio room, mm -hmm. make my way through the dining room, and sort of see if I see them come out the other end of the ballroom. Those two that just left the gallery. Those, those two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they were heading towards the main, towards one of the parlors. I said that uh, Hester and her mother were in a parlor. Okay. And younger sister's trying to get mm. his brother-in-law to get his wife, her older sister, to come intercede on that. Got it. Essentially. Mm. Um, so that's going there. So you don't know if they're, they could still be in one of the parlors. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd have to go out of here, make another stealth check to yeah. avoid Nigel. If you didn't want to be seen by Nigel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll make another check to see if Nigel spots me. He's on step like seven of the ten <laughs> step macaw feeding routine. That exactly makes my step. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, the macaws are still really loud. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to say, get on the deck. Get on the deck. <laughs> These macaws have done me nothing but favors so far. Um, um, bump you up. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so as you go out, you hear, you can see. Um, oh, right, they're the ones that were laughing at me. Um, give me a psychology check. It or an intelligence. Actually, just give me an intelligence check. Okay. <clears throat> that passes. Yeah, you, you realize maybe they weren't laughing and so much crying hysterically and not paying you any attention whatsoever of any oh kind. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what a critical failure gets you. Um. Mm. Um, but yeah, so in order to hear anything they were saying, you'd have to be in the room or really yeah. be, tr like, you'd have to, it would be a hard listen check mm -hmm. to hear what they were talking about. I, can I try for the hard listen? Yeah, go for it. That, it's it's not a hard pass. It's yeah. Yeah. No. You'd have to either try to get if you wanted to push, you'd have to get closer mm -hmm. or stand out there longer. Yeah. In which case, you'd like be risking get, discovery yeah. from mm -hmm. any of these people. And does it look like they're like deep in conversation over something? It's Hester is crying oh, hysterically okay. to her mother. Oh, they are okay. talking about something, but it's more of the anguished communication through tears instead of like a kind of a furtive. Quiet oh, conspiratorial it. moment. All right. So, you know, Anne is seeing a woman in hysterics. <laughs> it I, feels not outside the realm of propriety to go and offer assistance. Um, so, I'll walk in. So, I'd be like, okay. Oh, excuse me, ladies. I'm so sorry. Is, has something gone wrong? Is there anything I can help with? No. No, it's all gone wrong. And then. Uh, her mother turns to you and says, I, we're quite all right. She's just, she's had a, quite of a shock, but she'll be right as rain in, in a little bit of peace and quiet. I think I can fetch, just, perhaps. No, please just, just keep back. 
And you just when people die and they shouldn't die. And it's just really sad. And just you think they're gonna be alive and then they're dead. And everyone's like, what do you mean? They were just, just people die, and you're like, but yes, but no. <laughs> not supposed to be you're not supposed to be dead, right? Oh, absolutely not, dear. Um it's perhaps I will fetch her a bit of wine, maybe. Her mother's like, I can't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to run right to the dining room and find a servant who can give me a little a thing little of wine. Aperitif, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Very good, thank you. Give me a, a spot hidden check. Mm-hmm. Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bring the, bring the glass of wine back. Uh, mm-hmm. Patty Hillgrave mm-hmm. says, or Hillgrove, mm-hmm. um, grabs wine for me and says, thank you, um, here, here, Hester, it's, it's, it's gonna be alright. Plenty more fish in the sea, right? Mm-hmm. Nope. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, I'll take it. Um, yeah, and I'll kind of step out. Like, As you're doing it, you see Savannah and, uh, the two people you overheard, mm-hmm. followed by another woman who you recognize as Savannah Davidson, or you, who you assume is Savannah Davidson, the uh, second eldest sister of the Hillgroves, mm-hmm. kind of coming in. Uh, I'm going to become particularly fascinated with a nearby painting. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of like stand nearby with, I would say I also got a glass for myself when I went to get that one. And you'd be like, hmm. <laughs> Standing there, mm-hmm. all right. Um, leave you there for a second. What are what is Sally up to in this moment? I think I've um, quite overcome after that dance. It was a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna probably take a step out to the balcony mm-hmm. and just maybe like, yeah, I want to stand by the door and observe people for a bit, but just watch people watch a bit, listen on on conversations on the balcony. Maybe. What's going on in the corner? Yeah, give me oh. <laughs> Are you trying to overhear them? I'm not going to like go out of my way, but I'd like to maybe... Yeah, give me a listen roll. Okay. Oh, and then... It's not one of my things. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be so messy. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? I didn't do listen. But it worked. Oh, <laughs> yes! Sally is on. Sally is on top of it. You join a long line of people, (laughs) not definitely (laughs) not listening to what's happening there. Absolutely, the grass is so engaging this time of year. Practically dewy. Um, We can't even see it. Everyone's like, "Wow, the lawns! It's like too dark to see." Oh, that's so funny. (laughs) I love what they've done with the hedges. (laughs) Oh, you see Beatrice turns. When I married you, it was an expectation of trust and loyalty and faith. And I gave that to you wholeheartedly, along with the expectation you would give that back to me, along with your mother's money. (laughs) So far, I have held up my end of the bargain. Would you perhaps like to explain what was happening there? Robert's like, what if I didn't? Could we, maybe we just, what if we just enjoyed the ballroom? We just That's enjoyed the, the dancing. Craziest <laughs> 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 I, rights. I, <laughs> Beatrice, perhaps you're not entitled to every aspect of my personal life. Uh, and I would appreciate as is a favor to your husband uh, that you just let it be and we could just enjoy the ballroom and we can talk about it later. Beatrice says. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hear you. No. Well, tell me what's <laughs> happening immediately or I will go find out myself. Because yes, it is your personal business, but I married you and our businesses became the same. So if you've done something to cause everyone in this ballroom, everyone at this ball to look at you as if you have done something wrong, I need to know so that we can handle it together because I can't get rid of you. So it means if you've done something wrong, I've done something wrong. Uh Uh-huh. So what is it? What is it, darling, dearest? Robert's like, well, remember when you said you wanted my mother's money? That's great, me too. (laughs) Fortunately, the heart wills what the heart wills. And on a visit to town, I uh, 
was introduced and became greatly enamored by one Miss Anne Walden, Waldron. Mm. And we were, perhaps, in some capacities, one might say, <laughs> engaged to be married. Uh, and then I broke off the engagement because my mother found out and she threatened to disown me. And I didn't want to live in this world alone without money. And so I told her that and gave her some money so she wouldn't be to her. And it did not work out for her, I don't think. <laughs> Sally, oh my god. Sally is like, <laughs> Sally has slowly inched closer and closer into this conversation the entire time. You, you bump into like the local town oh, preacher. Pardon me. She's like, uh, begging your pardons a million times. Okay. <laughs> they're all, they're all watching, listening very intently. There's never been a room so not paying attention to that corner so intently. Uh, and as, as Robert says that, Beatrice says, we've been married for a year. And I, of time I've gotten to know you well. And I'd like to say that I expected better. But I cannot. Mm. However, here's where we are, and uh, here's where we have to go on. We will enter that ballroom, head held high, uh, and you will not speak, look at, listen, or rather we acknowledge the existence of one Miss Anne Waldron. The height of courtesy. We will attempt to repair the damage that your idiocy has caused, and then we will not come back here like we've not done something terrible. I idiot. Strong subtext, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and she leaves him alone in the balcony and, and goes back. Um, oh, I see that. Through... I'm gonna go over there. <laughs> over to his... and Robert remains. No, I'm gonna go see if I can like casually accidentally bump into Beatrice in a minute. But like, yeah, like, oh, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna follow her. She's gonna get in. So. Yeah. Uh, so Robert's just real. You. Uh, does anyone want to give me, or you want to give me psychology to see what, what's going on with Robert? Oh, sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know Damn. why. It's a six. It's a Damn, six. Damn, so? Uh, wow. It, it's interesting. Robert feels bad, but not nearly bad enough. Because. <laughs> oh, jerk. It, it's, it's like, he's, he's done a bad thing, and he feels guilty. But it's just sort of like, well, I had to. What were my other options? Mm. Um, so he, you know, he he feels bad, but he's not willing to do anything to make it better because that would actually be way worse for him. Mm. Um, so he's like, well, it's just, it's really unfortunate. I had, I had to do a bad thing. Okay. Um, so he's a scumbag scumbag, huh? He's a man in Regency era. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, no, like, honestly, this is, this is a very yeah, middle-of-the-road yeah. part. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, he could be a lot like better about this. He could also have been a lot better like about this. Woman <laughs> this is why Bones doesn't like coming back to England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, As yeah. I turn the corner and we're halfway down, I'd like to just do like a, oh, what a lovely time we're having in, in there. I could I could use a wine. Oh, would you care to accompany me to the... To, to get a glass? Uh, give me a persuasion check. Sure. <laughs> uh, give me advantage, because you have uh, the Ooh. reputation bonus. Oopsie boopsie. I will take this one as a as a hard pass. Very nice. Yeah, she looks to you and says, I absolutely could use a drink. Yes. That would be... Sorry, have we have we been introduced? Oh, how terribly gauche of me. Um, I'm <laughs> Mary Gilbert. I know my name. I'm Mary Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary. You're really, you're really riding that hard, this. that hard success right there. <laughs> oh, I'm, okay, I'm Mary oh, Gilbert. I know my name. <laughs> so nice to meet you. Uh, charmed, uh, Beatrice Hardgrove. Uh, the wine. Yes! Away! <laughs> so she, she's Away. going for the wine, unless you're you're going for some other conversation starter. No, we'll just, like, go get wine, and I'll maybe casually chat with her. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you're in the tiny pool of wine. Um, just barely misses me leaving. <laughs> yeah. Um, give me a spot hidden. Good call. 
Yes, heart. Oh, damn. No. Hot Ain't Sally. Nobody, <laughs> nobody rolling like Sally. No, Sally. Both in terms of how well she's rolling and know. how many rolls she's making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true, true. Uh, you see uh, Leopold Fulton and Annette Fulton. Fenton. Fenton? Yes, Annette Fenton. Uh, who, this is the grandmother. Um, she's the matriarch oh, of the right. family. And this is the second son. There's uh, also a young Annette, right? There is a young Adelaide. Adelaide. Oh, Adelaide, got it. Thanks. <laughs> I'm steal the tree at any time. I like the lore. You, you have your own tree. You have your own tree. I know. Any of these but I have people. to keep it hidden. So it's got yeah. all sorts of good. So you, you, you don't recognize people. <laughs> you, you think it's like they you might have seen. You probably saw, have seen Leopold around town a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't. You don't recognize Adelaide. But from context, they seem to be related. Um, and they're deep in a very serious conversation. Okay. Um, we're not quite sure what it is, and as they spot you looking at them, and they wander off quickly. Um, but they seem to be in some kind of very serious conversation. They're arguing back and forth uh, about something. Where are you we're guys chatting. at? Yeah. Um, as I will say, as uh, Mrs. Fenton left the room, I'm mm -hmm. gonna just try to get in, like, especially because she's clearly enjoying Leighton's company, and like <clears throat> Hubert asked for the first dance with me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to get further into the host's good graces. Um, I'm hoping I can make this a charm check. I would like to mess my hair up to match <laughs> Mrs. Fenton's a little bit and try okay. to like have her, like the host sort of like start the trend of the party. <laughs> okay. Um, Wild. You're gonna have to say something with this to explain what you're doing. Okay, 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 sure. Um, then, I, then roll for that. Great, I think within, um, Within earshot of, because mm -hmm. I know Isabel has already left, within earshot of Hubert as I'm leaving, as we're talking about uh, poison sash. Poison sash, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, by the way, did you see what Mrs. Fenton was wearing? It was quite the fashion statement, and I just sort of like mess up my hair a little bit, and I'm like, does this look anything like it? It's quite lovely. Yes, it is close. I think maybe a little bit of. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Bones immediately. Likes you, like, yes, <laughs> like it's like it's like yep. There's like a kindred spirit oh, happening yeah, yeah, yeah. here for sure. Bones is like this is like... a curious mind. I know <laughs> Same. Mind, but... yeah, I think I've like I've not met someone curious in a while. Um, yeah, can I can I make like a charm check or something? Yeah, absolutely. Give me give me a charm roll. Okay. Um, add your reputation bonus if you have one to oh, it. Oh God. Okay. Um, add my reputation. What is your reputation? Oh, I don't have a reputation no, bonus. Then... Um, let me see. Oh, that's exactly a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Holy shit, that's a 64. Exact pass. <laughs> exact pass. Ooh. Oh, incredible. Uh, yeah, you, you, you get uh, Hubert approves. <laughs> nice. Okay. I'm just trying to start a little trend. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, so he's he's chatting with people, but he, he... It's not clear if the gesture is effective, but he appreciated it. Yeah, it was something. Just, I'm just trying to get in the good graces of the host. And yeah, I don't care yeah what that, I like. that was effective. <laughs> Somehow. Um, Wildly. Um, also, I'm so sorry. I, I don't believe I've been introduced to, um, and I sort of gesture to ah, Mrs. Miss Willoughby. Miss Willoughby. Jessica, my old, one of my oldest friends, um, former, former uh, resident of this here estate, um, sister of the uh, the recently departed oh, Walter Willoughby. Miss Willoughby, terribly sorry to hear about your brother. That uh, that's you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Willoughby. Terribly sorry to hear about your brother. That um, truly a, a dreadful news to hear of his his passing. It was it was sudden and it was difficult. Yes, I appreciate you saying so. Of course, uh, but you know these these things happen. Yeah. How how are the rest of the? I'm sorry. Are the rest of your family okay? I I know this must be a um. We must all be terribly shaken from. The experience. Luckily, uh, most of the Willoughby's are long past. Um, it's sort of interesting, well, you know. They're all dead. You they're all dead. It's they're just, all dead. Um, <laughs> just, you could just say There's both. an interesting right. phenomenon in um, in the wild where, you know, natural selection, uh, it's a newfangled <laughs> sort of idea. Really? Uh, this Charles fellow. I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know <laughs> Not what yet, but... <laughs> We're fudging it. We're fudging history. <laughs> Bones um, is ahead of his time. <laughs> right, yeah. Charles Darwin stole from Bones. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> there's an, there's an interesting uh, situation that happens in the wild where... Uh, Certain members of a species will die out from an illness, and the ones that survive, survive. And it's what's interesting about Bolter is that his brother, his wife, his children died of a fever, but he survived. Yet, a few years later, he's taken by 
a winter fever. Peculiar. Oh, that is terribly peculiar, actually. Um, I'm so sorry to hear it. And what a what an anomaly mm. that someone would survive an initial fever that tragically took the rest of their family from them, and then not be able to withstand That's a what second. I'm Leighton, sounds like one of your mystery novels. Yes, uh, keep keep going. I'm, I'm feeling flush with ideas. Really, quite ah, yes. quite stimulating. Um, uh, can I roll to see if I get the dynamic? Like, yeah, like after talking to these two. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So my psychology is bad. I will. I want to make an argument for you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> can I roll anthropology, like as like a, oh, an God, understanding so of, of people? Good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think in this case. Yeah. Oh, I'll ask again. Oh, that's a twelve. That is a wow. hard, hard success. Yeah. It it seems weird that the person asking about the mystery stuff yeah. is not the writer, and the writer seems to have no clue what's going on. <laughs> well, I think Bones pulled Leighton aside to be like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jam on poison animals with this, and then, of course, Lenora walks up and it's like, oh, okay. I'm gonna jam on poison animals. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're jamming, we're jamming on poisonous animals. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I, I would say you strongly know something is up. Yes. I, I'm not sure you would, you would go for, so far as to say, ah, clearly this one's the writer and this one's the fake, but you tell me, you know, how you feel about that. Leighton, are you familiar with uh, the chameleon? I, uh, I... Marvelous creature, the chameleon. Um, <laughs> None of where? It has the ability to blend in with its surroundings, take on false colors, false identities, feel, if you will. I feel threatened right now, Lenore. Why, no, why do see, I feel threatened? The, the chameleon... Just kidding, thought of a books, darling. Yes. Uh, chameleons are a delightful creature. Um, I think you would enjoy maybe researching one for your next book. I still feel threatened, Lenore. That might actually be lovely fodder. Uh, the working title of your, your new book, actually, is um, is The Traitor's Inheritance, is it, is it not? Yes, yes, And of all the Poisoner's Inheritance, right? Well, I just thought the Poisoner's Inheritance it had a certain ring to it. It does have a ring to it, but, you know, if, if uh, someone like a... What did you say? Chameleon? Chameleon. Chameleon. Mm. Fascinating. Fascinating. Um, someone like a chameleon would be a very interesting character, don't you think? Is, is a chameleon a, a person or a... A lizard. A lizard? Yes, it is a color change. Here, here I was picturing a bird the whole time, and it's a lizard. <laughs> no, no, birds do marvelous things, but the chameleon is a very special lizard. Are they poisonous too? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I mean, as, as an author, I could, I could make it poisonous. Who's to say a chameleon isn't poisonous? I mean, I didn't know what a chameleon was before it's interesting. today. Your other books never seem to play with uh, the facts of the world. You seem to stick pretty stick strictly to... I what was could, possible I could in your branch, mysteries. I could branch out, perhaps. Couldn't he? <laughs> Couldn't he branch out? He <laughs> certainly could, if he was so inclined. Mm. Branch out. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful party. <laughs> I really must go look at the curio room. It's been some time. Um, Jessica? Oh, absolutely. Would you like to join me? Tell me all about the chameleon. Let's Does it do have it. hands? Chameleon, interestingly, has very hand like, and we. we <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lenora, lovely to make your acquaintance. Wonderful. I'm sure we should speak again soon. Yes. Come see the curio room if you're curious. Yep. Well, I am always curious. <laughs> Mr. Bones? Leighton? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Terror. <laughs> He's just he, he like gives you like this isn't the shit I said I wasn't gonna sign up for Lenore. <laughs> He's sharp. Okay, I can't I can't I can't there's no accounting for that. He's gonna ask me to recite passage of my book next. Okay, well maybe you should have read it. Maybe you should have read something that was easier to read. <laughs> Lenore just like takes a copy and like shoves it in him. <laughs> she like shoves it, it like, shoves it on his chest of like <laughs> the poisoner's hat pin. She's like, I need you to get to a room and read any three pages from this book. <laughs> start to finish. Don't skip around. Don't find a paragraph. Read it and then start over again. Go to a room silently and read three random pages. Just any of them. He turns to the back of the book in the last three no, pages. That one. <laughs> I'm begging you. Read the first page. Write down the first line. Read the last page. Write down the last line. 
read something in the middle. Yes, okay. Thank you so much, darling. Yes, I will go read three lines from this book. Thank you, love you. Appreciate it. Oh, yes. <laughs> you ask me to sign it. It's fine. <laughs> look, don't look like a... It's fine, just the author carrying his own book. This is fine. <laughs> just put it in your pocket. <laughs> Where do you see pockets in this? You don't have pockets. Not once for a book. Oh, well. It's ballroom. I'm supposed to be dancing. I'm not carrying a book. Where did you stick this book? <laughs> the same place I keep everything laid in. <laughs> all, all of Lenora's cleavage is books. <laughs> She's got the whole anthology <laughs> like spread out <laughs> in various like tent placement. <laughs> she looks not It is amazing what you can do with a good pair of stays. Keep me posted on whether you want the sequel. <laughs> Sister, you are the most terrifying creature I have ever encountered. Well, at the moment, I'm a bit uneven, so if you want a second book to read, let me know. <laughs> Ta-ta. Bye! <laughs> I think it's like, it's just going to go out to the balcony. Uh, and sort of... I hear the grass is lovely tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's been raving about the grass. I keep uh... overhearing folks talking about the grass as if it's really fascinating. <laughs> Um, as you're going out, this is information you should have. Um, and... <laughs> yes. Quiet. <laughs> Interesting, all right. Um, uh, and... Also, while I'm walking yes. with Jessica, I want to say, Jessica, I think um, young Miss Blackwell mm -hmm. might be a useful ally. She's kind of unexpectedly engaging. And I, unexpectedly, I... yes. <laughs> uh, I would have thought her brother would have been more You'd expect us as, as the writer. Just because she's writing the book. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Just because she's writing the book. <laughs> Out with it. That's so fucking funny. Seems <laughs> like some anti-women shit. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like some anti-women shit. When you say it like that. Right. Once you've heard it, but it's it just, obvious. It's, how could you ever... <laughs> right. Him? Writing books? She's like us, darling. She doesn't belong here. I mean... Let's get her. Let's get out. Right. Drinks at my place? Yes. Ooh. After... <laughs> right. After right. the ball's over. Yeah, well, yes. I hate just, to leave a party. No, no, here. yes. I mean, obviously, we, we came. We must stay. Right. We, we need to do... It well, the macaws have a big uh, finale. <laughs> oh, my God! What's the finale? <laughs> Diane, the macaws are really excited about it. <laughs> They've been talking about it <laughs> all a, day. A finale! <laughs> it's just finale! It's 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 just... Godspeed. What do you need me for? Ah, um, uh, I believe I need a stiff drink. Shall we? Uh, <laughs> so you, you guys head toward drinks. Um, as we're talking... Anne, let's go back to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what, what's Aww. happening with this situation? <laughs> what are you intending to listen? Um, you're, you're intending to listen. Uh, no. I'm gonna need a stealth check and a like, t okay. either a listen check or a stealth check, either to get close enough to hear or to be far enough away to be unobtrusive and to hear. If that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I'll make the listen check. Yeah, probably a listen check. Let's let's go listen. That's a pass. Pass. Okay. Um, not a hard pass, just a pass? Just a regular pass. Okay. Yeah, so you see uh, Savannah comes in. She's like, oh no. All right. Uh, Hester? How, how are you doing? Mother? Mother, what's... We agreed we'd let her cry it out and just let her be, right? Um, okay. Hester, agree with me. What is going on? And can we get this... You know, smile up, chin up? Can we cry after the ball, perhaps? See, yes, okay. And Hester's just like weeping, continue, and kind of repeating the same things, like someone's being dead. Um, just, so, who is dead? Is it is it Mr. Willoughby? Because I, I thought we all weren't really upset about that. It's kind of weird that you're upset now. No, okay. She turns around and says, where? When did Hester meet a boy? <laughs> because this, this is why Hester doesn't meet boys. <laughs> 
Uh, and you can see her mother says, well, or you can hear her mother say, I don't, I don't know. She's saying it was someone she met here at Wentworth. But I don't know. It certainly wasn't Zachary. Not after your brother nearly stabbed him. So, I mean, so, no. Okay, you sit with her, you figure it out. We can't all be in this room watching Hester cry. It's making me sad. It's making me sad, brings down the whole mood of the place. And we're here to have a good time. Yes, smiles up, face is bright. Uh, and she, so Savannah says, oh, I'll stay with Hester. I'll try to figure out who this person was. Um, because if they're, at least they're dead. She didn't run off with them because they're dead. So, positives. <laughs> Hester starts sobbing even more <laughs> probably upon hearing this. Um, so Savannah's left and then everyone else heads out. Mm-hmm. Um, Anne is coming to realize that there is no better tonic for anxiety than other people's problems. <laughs> <laughs> who stabbed who? I'm... Uh, so Anne heard Anne that heard. Quentin, who is the youngest Hillgrove son, okay. tried to stab Zachary. Um, the near heir. The near heir, yes. Quentin. Wow. Quentin Hillgrove. <laughs> they were referring to the instance of where, like, they were visiting over yes, Christmas. Visiting and over went, Christmas. So, like, the Hillgroves and the Wilbys were all at Redworth to, with the Fentons? So, uh. Or was this before Bolter's death? This was before Bolter's death. Okay. So, Christmas, the. You guys can kind of piece together that over early Christmas or late Christmas, early January, mm-hmm. the Hillgroves came to visit. Some of the sisters, including Hester, their mother, Patty, came to visit. And it went terribly wrong, and they left in a big rush. Mm-hmm. No one in town really knows details. Bolter died like a month and a half later, and almost immediately the Fentons came in and swept everyone out and took mm-hmm. over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the first time the Hillgraves would have been back. Hillgraves would have been back in Redworth since that incident. Got it. Um, and so it seems like Hester met a boy, mm-hmm. not Zachary, someone else. It's unclear. What would it have taken for the Hillgroves to have inherited? Was Quentin not they old They could enough? not have. Fenton's and the... Um... Yeah, because... So Patty is Rebecca's mother. Mm-hmm. We're going to look at the tree. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do some tree in here. Yeah, yeah. So <coughs> this is... Uh, That's Bol- Bolter and Jessica. Bolter and Jessica. Mm-hmm. Know them. Dead family. This is Bolter's brother, James. Patty married James mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and had Rebecca. Who is Zachary's mother. Who is Zachary's, Zachary's mother. Mom. Uh, James died and then Patty almost immediately got remarried. Carla, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and so That's she, in my notes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Walter's words, not mine. Yeah. Uh, it's like some anti-woman shit. <laughs> anti-woman shit, but you know. Uh, well, I think Walter's mostly mad that uh, Patty left Rebecca in his care and oh, basically sure. abandoned right. his three year old daughter That's valid. to go yeah. marry yeah. Archibald and have six children. Okay. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Including Hester and Quentin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Quentin and uh, Zachary are half cousins, yes. And Quentin is mm. Rebecca's half sister. It's half sister. They're not Willoughby's. Are so, they? Oh, sorry. No, are are they in any way related to the Fentons? They are through marriage. So Patty in the same way that they're related to the Willoughbys through marriage. Yeah. So the only their only relation is through marriage. So Mm -hmm. they're not blood relations. Got it. So they couldn't inherit couldn't inherit anything. Okay. Um, But that is an interesting question to think about for the future. I would imagine. Okay, so they couldn't like marry Quentin to like a Fenton. Um, they could, but then I mean the. They could in, the, the, if Quentin married one of the Fentons, he could, and they were to have a son, and they were to have a son. That oh, son could inherit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm getting the picture on account here. of the anti women shit. Yeah. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. In, inher- like fi- like Georgian in, in Regency inheritance is truly insane. I started yeah. looking up some. Of yeah. That. It, it's basically like whatever they decide is how it gets inherited, okay. and it's meant to go to whatever son has the same last name. Mm-hmm. first but in lieu of that just a blood relative yeah wow well because the idea is you want to keep it within the family but then yeah. also you want to make sure because the gentry are all really worried about this like rising merchant class rising middle class and so they need to be able to control not only their access to wealth 
but also how it gets passed on, mm -hmm. um, which is why if you're under the age of majority and you want to get married, you will lose your, like, and the person who controls your inheritance doesn't want you to get married, you could get married, but you lose your inheritance. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of that comes in. Um, after you're 21, you've reached the age of majority, you can do whatever you want, and your inheritance can't be threatened in that way. And that's really only mm -hmm. relevant for the men. Yes. So you're, you're getting a drink. You've overheard this juicy mm -hmm. gossip. Mm -hmm. um, you... Oh, so Sally and Bones are all in this room now. Um, what are you guys up to in Can this I room? Can I roll to see if I recognize Sally uh, being close again? Yeah. Give me that. Give me a stealth roll. Or a disguise. Do you have a disguise? I don't know. Oh, no, you're wearing the dress. So I don't have a disguise. Yeah. All right, give me a disguise then. Ooh. You can use your reputation. You're wearing your dress, so use your reputational bonus. Um, give me your. Oh, that's really close. What's, what's uh, this? Spot hidden. I'm going to spend two uh, points. That's an 88. Um, how, what is pushing roll? What do I have to do? Uh, to push you roll? have to tell me what you're doing to like try but again. So it could be getting uncomfortably close to her. Oh, it, yeah, it, I it, think Bones maybe gets, <laughs> gets in, in between the two of them. Mm -hmm. um, oh, because this is. Uh, what's her name? Yes, uh, Beatrice. Who is the Beatrice? New... I think uh, I think Bones is getting in her face to like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, who did he think was better than young Miss Waldron? <laughs> she seems nice. <laughs> um, that's still a fail. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a really sparkly dress. It's a really sparkly dress. Um, yeah, he's getting in her face and then turns to you, not knowing you're Sally, and says, "Love your dress." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <Just talking to. laughs> like um, I would like to talk with this is Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I am having such a lovely time. Mm -hmm. It's it's my my first ball actually. Well, c congratulations! You've uh, you certainly picked one to attend. How is oh, how are you finding it? I'm finding everything beautiful. The dresses, the music, the company. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, you must tell me. You you seem s so very happily yoked. May I ask how? How <laughs> 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 does one, uh, if one, one such as myself was looking for my unengagement of my own, um, what what should I know about folks here in in? Give me an etiquette check. Yep. Oh, Lord Almighty. Correct. <laughs> Yo, you look so <laughs> So very happily so very happily yoked. yoked. I fuck fucking A. <laughs> These dice should be illegal. <gasps> That's a one. Sally. <laughs> wow. She's destiny. She's destined to win. Yeah. Sally. She, I have never rolled. I am Sally. like the t most terrible roller. If it's a d20, it's always a one. She cannot do this. I so hard. Can't well, you, lose. Gotta, you gotta play more roll under games. Yeah. You gotta play roll under games. <laughs> Sally cannot lose. Yeah. This is a, we're playing this game, and then there's a Cinderella story happening. Yeah. 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 Sally is the belle of the freaking ball. You can see Beatrice. And like, Beatrice is kind of a bitchy person, sure, but she's not an evil person. And she's decided. Like you can just see in her eyes that she is gonna get you married at this ball. <laughs> like she's half a yes. bottle in. This is her goal. Oh my God. Like she's not happily I'm married. An ally. Someone is gonna get married. <laughs> You're gonna marry whether you like it or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's. I mean, she she grabs a uh, a very full glass and takes you to a settee and says, "Look, do you want to get married? Because you want to get married and you need protection and." You want money and and influence in this world, and that's a fine thing to trade marriage for. Mm -hmm. Or are you looking for someone you don't want to murder all the time? Huh. Because I can help you with one, for sure. An introduction will go a long way to a, such a, a delightful young lady. The second, <laughs> well, <laughs> do my best. I suppose eventually, yes. Um, one of those sounds fine. But I was really just wondering about more of the folk here yeah, and and making some acquaintance and and uh, getting to know everyone since this is my my very first ball. My dear, are you not accompanied? Oh, my father. He he unfortunately fell ill this evening, and so he dropped me off. <laughs> oh, my poor child. I know. What I, I mean, know. Oh, that is that a terrible dereliction of his duties to allow his a daughter 
to come to her first ball unaccompanied? And, and surely you had no friends in the area you could introduce you to? And oh, I could hello to a few of my friends. Everyone's having such a grand time. In the ballroom dancing, I thought I would um, make my own acquaintances. Well, that's charmingly foreign of you, but who could give you if advice? Uh, many people around here would like to be introduced formally, as is, a I mean, your mother really should have taught you this. Oh, no, if only there was someone um, beautiful and, and well-connected who could possibly help me make many acquaintances tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like, laying it on a bit thick, <laughs> but you're not wrong, you're not wrong. Um, and, you know, I have had such a delightfully terrible time <laughs> that helping no. you meet other people and not speaking to my husband at all sounds absolutely delightful. Well, happy to help. Oh, let's see. Would you like conversation or dancing? Would you introduce you to conversation. <laughs> Great. So le less of the dancing type and more of the looking for someone studious or someone who will just listen to you talk. Because oh, you know, I either would do. I I, I have um. I think I would need quite a few more of these before <laughs> I want want to dance again. <laughs> That's the spirit. She's like pour some of her wine into your glass. <laughs> Honestly, loving this for Beatrice. Yeah, <laughs> Beatrice just. Took a turn for the for her night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Just like I'm going to use my bitch skills to get you a husband. That's it. <laughs> women That's helping it. women. <laughs> you just don't like Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, just say it with us. Is the worst. Robert is the worst. In the same room, I think I'm still talking about chameleons. I'm like, so Jessica, chameleons, their eyes move independently of one another. So they can be looking like this, or they can be looking like this, or they could be looking like this. And uh, I think I accidentally like point at the two of them and then go, oh, hello, um, and carry on getting a drink. The hairs on the back of Lenora's neck stand up as they, like, for whatever reason, the air of chameleons continues around there. Do you, do you perhaps are acquainted with uh, these folk? No, maybe some other time. <laughs> it's like, well, let us to a the art gallery. Let's go to the art gallery. We can admire things, and men can admire us. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Let's away. Great. Uh, so she drags you over to the uh, gallery. Uh, that's not you guys. Hmm? That's you. Uh, the other BH. <laughs> the gallery. <laughs> um, and you see a couple other people are there. Biatch. Am I right? Am I right? Oh, that's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> Um, let's see, probably everything is there. I like it because it's also what Bones token is. <laughs> I'll be Biatch too. <laughs> Biatch. Yeah. Biatch parentheses affectionate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm kind. Beatrice takes him and she says, Oh, excellent. Mr. Leopold, um, could I perhaps introduce you to my companion, uh, Mary Gilbert? Charmed. D delighted. Uh, are you, I, I don't believe I, we have been acquainted. Are you. A new in town, or this is my very first ball. Uh, can you surely you... know by far that Mr. Gilbert provides food for the town. So he's quite an accomplished farmer. I, uh, you know, his he, he manages his fields quite well. Um, and, and his uh, the farmers who, who till his soil. Um, no, I, I don't believe I, we've been officially acquainted. We we're hoping, obviously, the, the purpose of the ball. Can you give me an appearance check? Looking great. Where is it? It's a, one of your oh, base stats. Okay, that's fine. That'll do. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is indeed charmed. Um, he starts telling you about some of the, the portraits. Um, I giggle he, as appropriate. <laughs> he, yeah, he actually can tell you a fair amount about them. Okay. Um, so just to say, like, some, there's some uh, great landscaping stuff here. Some uh, interesting art. It, most of this looks like it is new stuff that the Fentons have purchased. They haven't kept everything. Okay. Uh, Mr. Willoughby was not necessarily one for art. Uh, so you guys are chatting. Didn't waste any time. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think Jessica and I are going to walk towards the curio room. Mm -hmm. And if do I see Anne when I walk by? I was about to say, I mean, yeah. like, that first glass of wine feels like it helped. And so it's like, you know, a little is good. More must be better. Um, and Anne's going to get a second glass Perfect. of wine. Uh, when you pass by, Bones is going to say, ah, young Miss Waldron. I must ask you to join us in the curio room. I'm about to explain to Jessica all the various gifts from around the world, and it seems like something you might find rather interesting. Um, that would be 
Absolutely lovely, Mr. Bones. Wonderful. Grab your second beverage and meet us in. He's, he's just stopped talking about chameleons, so... Ah, would you like to hear about chameleons? I can save the rest for the curio room. <laughs> Their eyes look both at devil and at the god, as I have learned. Yes. <laughs> Simultaneously. One to the south, Shocking. one to the north, as it were. Anne has a moment of, like, really, like... You, you hear something, and you're like, I wonder if I can do that. Your body kind of seems to, like, rise. <laughs> to like, and then she, like, stops herself at the last second, like... Um, do lead the way, Mr. Bones. <laughs> Don't worry, I've tried to. <laughs> um, and we all head into the yeah. trio room. Nigel, how are the macaws? They are... They have their little outfits for the they finale. Are... <laughs> I'm sorry. Them? I'm sorry, sir. Outfits? I've just got them settled. They've just stopped... Nigel, howling. did you pack the little outfits? <laughs> I, I, packed, I, I, I packed little outfits. All right. Did you pack? Hop two. Nigel. Now, Nigel. Do I have to give you more money? <laughs> All right. Nigel, when we get back to John, have him add a shilling to your uh, weekly pay if we deal uh-huh. in shillings in this year. You got a raise. <laughs> <laughs> you got a raise. You got a raise. Pop him up. Uh, Get on the deck. Um, <laughs> yeah, Nigel heads out. Outfits. Finale. <laughs> the, birds, the birds have little outfits. Yes, we've, uh, well, you know. There are all manner of stores around the world. When you when you think about it, there, there there could be any kind of store you could think of. And what I encountered when procuring these birds was a small bird outfit store, and I simply couldn't resist. An alley. Who could? Okay, no. um, yeah. So then Bones proceeds to start pointing out all the things in the curio room, and he's like, "Well, in my youth." You know, I would take people on hunting trips, that's more... You know, as I got older, I didn't like the killing so much, so now I deal more in live animals and exotic pets. Um, and uh, and while he's, like, demonstrating, he's going to reach into the mouth of, like, a grizzly bear. Mm-hmm. And uh, is the key to a room I'm thinking of still in that mouth? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Great. And he grabs that and he yeah. tries to pocket it while being kind of discreet. Give me a sleight um, of hand. Ooh, oh, I'm oh. not very good at that. Um... Channel Sally. <laughs> uh, no. He's not, he's not, he's, yeah. Uh, Jessica absolutely clocks you. Um, yeah, I think you see, like, you see him He just reach... drops it in his, like, yeah. pocket. Yeah, yeah, you see him grab something, but you don't, you don't know mm-hmm. what it is. <laughs> Can I make a spot hidden to see, catch what it is? Uh, yeah. You'd have to, yeah, you just have to succeed since he failed. Yeah. No. No. Anyway, um, as you see over here, here is a, uh, a, um, there are not photographs in this time. Here is a drawing <laughs> of uh, illustration. Here is an here is an illustration of myself and uh, the uh, chief lion of a of a great pack uh, as we sat and posed for several hours. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I do. Is, am, am I incorrect? I once read a book um, that a group of lions was called Pride. Yes, a pride. Pride is the down, be it the downfall, as it were. <laughs> is it is it particularly an issue for lions? Is that why? It, well, the 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 one. head lion, the the king of the jungle, as it were, uh, can get a little prideful, and it does sometimes uh, get in the way. But you know, once you get past his uh, hard exterior, he's really quite lovely. <laughs> yes, this one specific lion. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, sir, are you familiar with a being called an ostrich? Oh, am I familiar <laughs> with an ostrich? Let me tell you, are you familiar with a giraffe? All right, we're gonna have to do a lot of legwork. <laughs> you know what the questing beast is, I know so I'm assuming the questing you beast. know what a giraffe is. But do I know that a questing beast is just a giraffe? Do you? Well, sorry, what am I trying to make here? Uh, if, do you have, have natural history? No, I was... Or you could use your in- it, yeah, education. Like, so I have education. Is this, am I doing going for a heart or a... Yeah. What's the I'm word? saying a heart. If you're asking what an ostrich it is, okay. I'm saying points. a heart education. And the points. <laughs> yeah, do it. This is more. Right. Two this points. Is, yeah. This is very <laughs> Two points. Two points. <laughs> gonna, like, next session, I'm going to ask you to make a luck check, and all of you guys are going to be like, oh, we have several more <laughs> sessions. <laughs> a giraffe. As, as in questing beast. Yes, the questing beast. Absolutely. Marvelous in person, first of all. But imagine a giraffe. Okay. The neck of a giraffe mm-hmm. on a bird. 
It's a bird. It's a bird. Now imagine this bird could not fly. Imagine a a. Ah. What's the purpose of a bird that does not fly? <laughs> Have you seen Mrs. Fenton's hair this evening? <laughs> I right. I did. Are you familiar with the legend of the Baba Yaga? <laughs> <laughs> have you read any Russian folk tales? I was going to say that I have. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, I want you to take in your mind. Edge. Close, Miss, Miss Waldron. Close your eyes with me. Close your eyes with me. We are Baba Yaga hut legs, <laughs> Miss Fenton's hair body, a giraffe neck, and then the head of a shaved duck. <laughs> That, my dear, is an ostrich. It's like an animal. <laughs> and it's a paw. Um, that sounds horrifying. And this man must truly be the bravest man in the world to have faced such a fearsome beast. Yes. Um, my god, that is tr- truly remarkable. Yes. They warm up to you after you put them in a bit of a headlock. Oh, they do? Yes, it's a show of dominance in their packs. <laughs> Flocks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like everything is a pack to this man. Prides. <laughs> <laughs> How very interesting. Um, what, what did you just pull out of that, uh, that beast's mouth? Ah, yes, uh, one of his teeth. I'm going to give it to young Mr. Zachary. Last Colt. Name? Young Mr. Colt, I will be uh, giving him a bear tooth. He, he didn't believe me that a grizzly bear was a, uh, a great beast of the Americas. Uh, can I roll zero uh, to lie? Or do I need to roll or to does lie? He need to roll? Uh, uh, yeah, give me, um... Can I do fast talk? Yeah, do fast talk, and then do your psychology. This, I mean, it's not, um, this is not likely to do... Uh, that's a 35. That's a 34. <gasps> Which one? Was it extreme pass for either one of you? Mine's a regular uh, pass. Mine was a hard pass. All right, and then he gets it. So you are a good friend to the, to the Colts and the Willoughby's. Ah, yes. I The Colts are family. The Willoughby's are family. Bolter and I are... We're old friends. Um, my apologies for this. Oh. People die every day. I'm sure in your profession, more often than you. Well, (laughs) yes. Uh, Jessica says, bones. Uh, Jessica. Will we continue with the giraffe, or or do you have perhaps other business at the ball? Ah, yes. Um, Jessica, I was hoping I could step upstairs. I want to check and see if something that that I left from Bolter is still here. Oh, it's it's not my house? Ah, (laughs) yes. Mm -hmm. I can keep forgetting. <laughs> Me too, sometimes. Well, Miss Waldron, uh, I'm gonna go upstairs without asking permission. <laughs> <laughs> if the Fentons ask, you didn't see me. I've got them preoccupied. Nigel? Oh, Nig- Nigel? Nig- Nig- Nigel's, Nigel's, Nigel's getting the little Nigel's getting the little Nigel's gone. Nigel's gone. Jessica, if you see <laughs> Nigel, would you have him... And then he's like, hold on. And he pulls out a little pad of paper and he writes... Um, he writes down uh, at least your two names. I don't know your name yet. Um, and it says, Jessica, when you see Nigel, could you have him gather these individuals uh, at the top of the stairs? Just... You as well, please. Yes. <laughs> Just gather it. Yes, in um, two or three more dances. I'll All be right. ready for you. All right. Incredible. I, uh, that, if you get thrown out, I, oh. I cannot get you back in. <laughs> I've got a whistle for that, don't worry. <laughs> Godspeed. Godspeed. I, uh, Bones, yep. All right. scoots upstairs. Bones is going to go Quite the eccentric character, is he not? <laughs> it is the least of what anyone has ever said about him. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to examine the mouth of a grizzly to see mm-hmm. if any missing teeth. Uh, give me a hard intelligence check or a natural worlds check if you have one of those. Like a nature check. No, I don't want to spend the five luck points. It's kind of an old bear. It's hard to tell. Like, you don't see any obvious teeth out, but 
don't, we've never really seen the mouth of a bear, so who's to say? Who's to say how many teeth it's supposed to have? Mm. Yeah. Uh, so you're, yeah, you're you're not sure. And I thought I was being very clever with that. Too. <laughs> oh, I, that was good. I yeah, that, that was good. That was very good. Uh, uh, let's see. So you're you're up. You're you're going up here. Uh, I think Jessica she's gonna hang out with the curio room here. Mm-hmm. She doesn't seem like she doesn't seem inclined oh, yes. to move. She's I waiting for Nigel. I feel very comfortable in Jessica's company. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm also going to just stick with Jessica. So she's waiting for uh, Nigel to get back then, and. So you, you're climbing up the stairs. I've also handed a note to Jessica with Miss Waldron's name on it while they're in the same <laughs> yeah. room together. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see the note. Oh. All right. Um, Lenore, what are you doing? Um, I'm finding myself in the presence of a lot, like surrounded by uh, hill groves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just going to take a minute to just adjust, now that I've lost <laughs> half my chest, uh, <laughs> to adjust my sort of outfit and try to listen in on mm-hmm. the various Hillgrove conversations, because I know a little bit about the drama there. Um, and then I have a little sneak I want to do. Great. Uh, yeah, you see that uh, Hester and Savannah do come in at some point, uh, still a little teary, but sort of putting on a brave face. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are quite a lot of Hillgroves. There are a lot of Hillgroves. Yeah, fact. they're just surrounded by Hillgroves. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to pick up on any of the family mm-hmm. dramas. Uh, yeah, so you see that... So Archibald is not around, so you don't see the the, the father of the family. Um, you see Patty, so she's here trying to dance with people. Um, she's not hugely popular, it doesn't seem like anyone who, and you don't know anyone, but you do see, you don't know many people, but you do see that some people who have, like, there's some people who seem to not really care for her, and you're not sure why some people care and some people don't. Would I know her as Rebecca's mother? I think you would know, yes, you'd know her as her mother. I don't think you'd know necessarily the full details of how she was raised and all of that. Like, the full details of how that adoption or yeah. fostering worked. And I haven't been introduced to any of the whole groves, I think. No. So I couldn't go talk to any of them. Okay, then I'll just, like, politely <laughs> listen. Just just politely. Um, yeah, there is, you could find one of the host. you could find the host and ask him to introduce you to everyone. Mm. Hester is right here. So that would be allowable with the conversation. Oh, actually, yeah. Then I'll just go up to Hester. Um, Hester? Oh, or uh, Hubert? Hubert? Is Hubert. that Hubert? Hubert. Okay. Hester is here. Okay. Hester is the youngest. Great. The youngest sister. Um, Mr. Fenton, a lovely ball this evening. It's, it's really been wonderful. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you think so. I, it's a bit of the, the kerfuffle at the beginning, but uh, it seems to be evening out so far. Some lovely dances. Of course, these things do happen when you bring a lot of people together. Um, would you mind? I, I seem to find myself surrounded by Hillgroves without my brother. Would you mind um, doing me the honor of an introduction with some of the Hillgrove family? Oh, of course. I would be delighted to. Thank you so much. Uh, so he, he takes you around. He says, uh, which Hillgrove would you like to be introduced to first? Um, Stabber. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the J one again? The J one, this is... Yes, this, no, this is Joanna Cunningham, so this is the oldest sister. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go with Savannah. Savannah's like the middle child, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, Miss uh, Savannah, if that's all right. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, so, oh, um, uh, Savannah or Susanna? Susanna? I thought you is, said Su- Savannah. It is, well, there's only one, so it is, that's both the same person. I've just been saying two different names. Oh, okay. uh, it is Susanna. Uh, but it's Susanna Davidson, so... Uh, Miss Susanna, if you would. Uh, or Mrs. Davidson? Mrs. Mrs. Davidson. Davidson. So, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Davidson, and, uh, oh, hello, may I introduce, uh, this is, uh, Lenora Blackwell, uh, in, her brother is, uh, Leighton, uh, Leighton Blackwell, I'm sure you're familiar, the author, but I'm introducing her around, uh, Miss Blackwell, this is, uh, Savannah David, uh, Miss Savannah Davidson, Mrs., this is Mrs. Savannah Davidson, and, uh, Miss His- Hester Hillgrove. Oh, pleasure, pleasure to make uh, both of your acquaintances. Uh, are you enjoying the evening so far? Uh, Hester's like still kind of weak. She's like, it's been, yeah, it's been really great. Everyone's been really nice. I've really been enjoying the ball so far. Oh, that's so lovely. I know the seasonal allergies can bit a bit, get a bit uh, difficult on the system. <laughs> What's an allergy? Oh, you know, I was talking to Mr. Bones a while and he had brought all these newfangled <laughs> ideas, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Seems like quite a character. Oh, he truly is, isn't he? Um, I think, like, taking in people's perception, like, I really like Bones, but mm-hmm. I think taking in other people's perception, I'm just going to lean in. And be like, 
He's really interesting, isn't he? Savannah says, yes, I pre- have you been previously acquainted? Only this once. I'm just, I'm truly mm. fascinated to find out more about him and, um, and honestly, the Willoughby's. I mean, it seems like such an interesting um, bunch. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we are, so we are family. We've been you know, Christmases sometimes together. We can't really, we didn't really know them very well. Yes, of um, Well, I'm sorry to hear about your loss. It, it must be difficult to lose a family member, no matter how distant. You know, it is, it is always difficult, yes. When people die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <I> hated that. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty bad uh, psychology, is it? Ooh, actually, I'm going to spend five luck points and make it a success <laughs> on a psychology roll. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, yeah, again, like, she doesn't really care. It's kind of inconvenient that Bolter died, mm. but mostly because they stopped being invited to Redworth. Uh, it... She's not really broken up about it. They didn't really get along. Um, and it seems like she's sort of privy to maybe a deeper dislike. It's not just the kind of family, general, we don't get along. But like she knows why they have a disagreement at the very least. Does she seem like she is, um, I guess what I'm looking, because I wanted to meet Susanna because she seems like kind of the middle child. Mm-hmm. And I kind of am looking for, like, does she have skin in the game? Mm-hmm. Or is she just like, my mom has beef? Yeah. I think she has gonna like. It seems like she's a little bit of skin in the game. Okay. Of in the sense of all these families are jockeying for power and position ring right now, mm-hmm. and the Hillgroves have showed up in force to reiterate. You know, they're still they're related to the Fentons too. You know, of course. Mm-hmm. But if only by marriage. Yes, of um, okay. But Hubert Fenton is also here. Yes. So okay. Great. Um, well. You know what, losses aside, it's really lovely to see so much of, of your family and uh, to be able to meet you all. I've really been looking forward to it. It's, it's uh, we are but humble people here, uh, you know. Uh, of course, um, it's it's delighted to meet everyone. And, and please, if you're ever in the area again, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're in, where are we? We are in, uh, we're just outside of Cheshire. Oh. So it's easy, you know, up to... You're in the middle of the country. Oh, yes, no, just a, just a jaunt from Lower Lincolnshire, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's the spirit. I mean, I mean, truly, as with your brother, you must travel quite extensively. Oh, yes, well, he does a lot of travelling for uh, interviews and the like, and sometimes I have the pleasure of going with him, but uh, not always, you know. Uh, I I keep to myself a lot, but... Um... Oh, I never thought about following in his footsteps. He's such a... And Hester is, is joining. She's clearly read all of the books. She's like, oh, he's such... I mean, he's such a fantastic writer. Uh, I mean, what's it like having a brother that writes that well? <laughs> I think every time Lenora gets these questions, it's just like a little bit of a twist. Um, <laughs> and she just kind of like is used to it at this point. And he's like, well, <laughs> you know, a lot of the time I can't help but just appreciate him. I mean, it, it, it it would be easy to be envious of a, a sibling if they were any less generous, but um, my dear Leighton is so generous of spirit that I honestly can't be anything other than happy for him, and I can't wait to see what he'll do next. His mind is a mysterious and beautiful place. Truly. He's just so, he's just so inspiring. He's um, quite available for conversation, if you should like me to make an introduction, Miss Hester. Hester. Would you be so kind? I would love to. Oh, I mean, yes, of course. Right, right this way. Um, I, <laughs> I'm going to abandon my self mission briefly yeah. um, and go introduce Hester to Leighton, wherever he is. He's out in the balcony. Great. Um, Miss Susanna, do you mind if I, um, or Miss, sorry, Mrs., what is it, Dayton? Uh, Mrs. Davidson. Mrs. Davidson, do you mind if I borrow your sister? Be delighted. Thank you so much, Danny. Um, and I'll grab Hester and um, say, yes, oh, Leighton is uh, wonderful. Feel free to pick his brain on all manner of things related to the books. <laughs> and um, just sort of like deviously <laughs> introduces the two of them. Um, he's a wealth of information. He never forgets a detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't wait to ask him about everything. The poisoner's hat pin was just 
It was a triumph. You know what? People really seem to like that one, and I just don't understand it. It's really not his best work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, still talking. What was the stealth mission you wanted I to wanna, do? I don't know if this is really a stealth mission, mm. but I think I just want to pop into this room really quick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just to have a little look-see. I mean, as you guys are walking, actually walking through, if you if you wanted to go out this way, you could. Sure, let's um, let's take the long way. Yeah, so it's, it's just the library. Oh, but it's more uh, Hillgroves. Mm. Yeah, it's more, there's a lot, lot of Hillgroves. There's a lot of Hillgroves. Hillgroves. Yeah. Oh. Um, Heavy, and I think, heavy. actually, you know what, I think as I'm walking, I'm going to take Hester a, a little bit into confidence here mm -hmm. and say, darling, I, I, I did want to introduce you to my brother, of course, but um, woman to woman, I can't help but wonder, is everything all right? It, no, I, I'm not going to do, do you the disservice of pretending that I am fully fine. I think it's quite obvious by my countenance that I am a little bit upset. Uh, however, it's I just received some upsetting news um, that... Nothing can, no one can help with and no one can change. And really the best thing I can do is enjoy the ball and meet everyone who's so delightful here. I'm so sorry to hear it, darling. I mean, my brother is really a delightful conversationalist. He's brilliant and I'm, I'm excited for you to meet him. Um, can I ask, would you like to unburden yourself a bit? It doesn't seem like there are many people here willing to listen. If you need someone to lend an ear, I'd be happy to. Give me a persuasion with advantage. Or like a, a charm or a fast talk, whatever you have. Ooh, those are, wait, this one, these are both, these are both pretty bad for <laughs> charm. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to push it. Go for it. I'm going to push the charm roll. Um, and I think, I just, I think this is, could be disastrous etiquette mm -hmm. wise. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But I think I just like, as she's hesitating to speak, I just like reach out a hand and put it on her arm. Which could be horrible, but we'll see. Ooh, um, that is a. I'm gonna spend four luck points. Here. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, what? If I pushed it, would I do it with? Oh no, you, well? can't, you can't use luck points oh, for a pushed push. roll. A pushed roll, you're just stuck with whatever oh, you get. Oh yeah, that's true. It's a fail, but it's not a terrible fail. It's just a fail. It's a fail and a pushed roll. Um, a fail and a pushed roll is inherently Is that a always just fail. bad? Okay. It, it's not always just bad, system. but like yeah. it's sort of you established beforehand. Got it. Okay. Are the consequences going to be bad? And we said yes. That's mm. right. There you go. Yes. Okay. Uh, understand. Understand. Miss yeah, my charm is 64. Shoot. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Miss Hillgrove grabs her head back. Just, excuse me. I'm. I deeply appreciate your offer to introduce me to my your brother, but I do not know what I have done to give you the impression that I'm willing to release my confidence so freely into the world that you may lay your hands upon me. I'm so terribly sorry, um, Miss Hillgrove. I was not my place to do so. I, I just um, saw someone potentially in need of a bit of comforting. Um, entirely my fault. Shall we go on to, uh, to meet later? I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be a better conversationalist than me. I'm beginning to th suspect so, but yes, let, let us pretend this never happened. Of course. And to um, move on. Sorry, darling. I, um, I sort of, like, just flush. <laughs> <laughs> like, so red. <laughs> um, walking by, um, and introduce, um, Leighton and Hester, knowing now that Hester has some information. Mm -hmm. Um, and then... Uh, sees this as, you know, another opportunity. Um, Leighton, darling, I uh, just want to introduce you to uh, my new friend, uh, my new acquaintance, rather, uh, Miss Hester Hargrove. Hester, Leighton, uh, Leighton, Miss Hester. Hester. No? Um, Leighton, darling, uh, do be a dear, and uh, why don't you entertain Hester, maybe for the next dance or two? Um, and oh, really? Of, of course. Yes. If you don't mind. Uh, and she's very curious to hear all about your books. I told her as much. You don't forget a detail, do you? No, um, that's me. <laughs> and I'm like a steel I, trap. Like, you read it? Um, and I just sort of lean in and like kiss my brother's like mm -hmm. cheek, like a little introduction. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, pop off to the other room for a moment. So uh, in the meantime, enjoy yourselves. And I go to kiss his cheek and I say, find out why she's so <laughs> and I so guess I will comfort her in her time of need. <laughs> Don't be obvious, damn it, Leighton. <laughs> and then I like sort of like gestures to himself. At you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So you're finishing up that conversation. Uh, let's go back to Sally briefly. Okay. So I charmed Leopold somehow, and then um, 
as he's showing me some paintings. Can I just... Oh, it's so lovely uh, to have you show me around here. It's so kind of you. I, I do hope it's not an imposition. It seemed as you and... Um, you and Annette had, had been speaking about something before we came in. Oh, you know, my grandmother is always just concerned for the welfare of the family. I appreciate, I appreciate your request, or your, um, your kind inquiry, but I'm, it really is nothing. It, it is even less of an imposition to be showing such a, a, a lovely young lady around such a wonderful home. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, it, it must have been quite a whirlwind coming here to our little town. Oh, I would, I would certainly never call it little, per provincial, perhaps. Oh. Uh, but, I mean, Bedworth Manor is certainly quite grand, and, uh, you know, Father is, is determined to, to be a, a light and a, a guiding presence in the community here, so I think we're hoping to, uh, to meet many of you and to stay around and, and generally entertain much more than we uh, are given to understand the previous owners did. How kind and honorable of the Fenton family. Oh, you flatter us. Oh, no. Of course not. This is a lovely party. And the only thing that could make it better is if I had some fanciful information I could maybe tell my siblings when I come home. Um, but pe perhaps have you found any anything of note here at the manor? Uh, give me a persuasion. Yep. Doing my best. <laughs> come on, Sally. Can't lose. Clear eyes, full heart. <laughs> Dress with HP. Can't lose. Um... Can I do fast talk? Uh, you do get a, an advantage on this because it's you're talking to Gentry. Mm -hmm. And this is persuasion, or which one? Sorry. Uh, this is charm, charm, fast talk, whichever one charm. you have. They're all kind of the same. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, with your advantage just to see if you get, get like a. Yep. <laughs> Bruh. Really? It's a four. <laughs> oh Whoa. my god! <laughs> Clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. <laughs> so that dress <laughs> it's a magical is dress. working for Sally. Cinderella over here. It is blinding dude. everyone oh with these rhinestones. Sally, never give up, never what? <laughs> <laughs> um, Leopold, Leopold says, well, did you promise you can keep a secret? Oh, of course. Well, there are, we found several in the house, at least one passageway that leads between rooms as if there were no connections. No. It is, it, would, you, would you like to see one? I would love to see one. Uh, so he, he suggests you head out, um, and you see that the grandmother and Beatrice are sort of chatting in the corner as, as you walk out, uh, and, and Beatrice says, Oh, off, off for more dancing! No! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh? Oh, I'm s Well, where would you be going then with such a charming young man? Oh, well, you're extraordinarily generous grandson is going to show me about the manor a bit. Oh, just, just a tour of, of the public spaces then? Correct. Well, lovely. I, <laughs> it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And I yours. Yeah, uh, Miss Gilbert. Deep, curtsy. <laughs> <laughs> See that uh, she turns to Beatrice like, oh, somehow a strange young woman. Beatrice is like, she's great. She's a little odd. But I'm going to get her married. <laughs> She's new here. <laughs> um, great. So Leopold takes you out here and takes you into the curio room. Mm. <laughs> um, and and sees uh, and is occupied. <laughs> and and Jessica is like, Ooh, oh, perhaps you'd uh, care for a, a turn around the ballroom. Um, this room seems to be occupied. Sure. <laughs> Delightful. Uh, Another dance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go back, and there's just another. There's another dance starting up. Oh, we've missed the and, beginning and, of this and one. And just looks over at Jess and is like, "What a strange." <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, uh, Nigel comes back, uh, and he he's he's just he, the most defeated look upon his face. Just carrying small. Just please describe these outfits. Mm, little outfits. <laughs> of course, of course. It, it, it would be the sort of thing somebody would have been thinking of this whole time if they were smart. Um, <laughs> please tell me there's a vest. Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining that, like <laughs> sequins haven't been invented, mm -hmm. maybe quite, but mm -hmm. uh, but it is a it is a, a gilded vest for mm -hmm. each little macaw um, with like ornate. 
patterns. Um, each macaw has a little, uh, a different pattern from around the world. Um, and they do, they do the, the dance of the seven seas, mm -hmm. of course, as the finale, mm -hmm. um, when they each represent a corner of the world. Um, so yes, very ornately gold patterned vests for each of them that represent all the different places that uh, Bones has traveled on his most recent like adventure. This patchwork. Well, each we, vest is a different uh, is a different corner of the every globe. Every time he goes, he yeah. gets a vest made for the macaws. Yeah, well, there are small bird outfit stores all over the world. <laughs> uh, as, it's as like keychains at this time. <laughs> they also <laughs> have little top, little matching top hats. Oh, yeah, they have little mm. matching top hats. Yeah, That's um, nice. they do not like having them put on. <laughs> that sounds so. right. Uh, all right. Oh, poor Nigel. Poor Nigel. Yeah, uh, Nigel receives the note from Jessica, and just between the note and the bird's costumes. At the bottom of the note, it says, this is more important than the birds. <laughs> <laughs> he just chucks the bird costumes over his shoulder. Oh, uh, maybe not that <laughs> <laughs> He places them to the side, uh, but kind of hidden, so maybe you'll forget about them. Oh, Holmes never forgets about the little outfits. <laughs> He spent at least seven excursions curating them. A lot of my money has gone into little bird outfits. <laughs> you can't leave these birds with the Fendons. Yeah. They're gonna kill these birds. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what bones fully throw it through that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so it looks like as you come in, the dance has just started, so you are safe for now. Uh, the, uh, let's, let's put some new people in here. Remembering everyone. Assuming these are all partnered correctly. That's fine. Um, you see some more people have started to dance. Your brother, Leighton, has been coerced into a dance by Hester, and they are, she's chatting his ear off, and he looks the amount, exact amount of pained that you were looking for. Oh, perfect. Uh, I just, hope he's finding out why she's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out there. Uh, and then Bones, let's go back to you. Yeah, heading oh. upstairs. Oh. Going to. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, going going upstairs. First person in Vegas. Gotta see the key. Where's the key go? All right. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need a stealth check. Um, Bones is. Oh, pretty good at stealth, actually. Nice. Uh, not, not that good, apparently. Um. I am going to fail that, um, but I think I'm going to try to be quick in favor of, in lieu of stealth. I think I'm going to try to get where I'm going quickly in lieu of being sneaky. And... So as you fail that stealth check, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you're walking up the hallway and Isabel Fenton comes out <gasps> of her bath, her bedroom, mm. hair completely done up, uh, finally have fixed this bird's nest and sees you walking toward her. This is Fenton. Ah, Mr. Horse Herder. Horse Finder. Horse Finder, yes, if you're coming to You can call me Bones. Mr. Bones. Yes. Apologies for intruding. Uh, I spent, you know, many years in this house and was just uh, looking to connect with my old friend, Walter, by walking. Uh, walking the halls a little bit, get away from the well, noise downstairs. May I suggest that if you'd like to connect with your friend, you could do so... Uh, perhaps in a public area, or if you're actually looking for him, I, I believe he is in the graveyard, buried right. down hence. Yes, I understand, I understand. But, you know, this was once a bit of a second home for me, so if you'll indulge me, I'd love to just do a lap around the second floor and Give me have persuasion. a quiet moment. Do a lap. But you have disadvantage. Disadvantage? Come Because it's gentry, or fast talk charm, whatever you're- Fast talk, yeah, yeah. Come um, on, come on, okay, bones. that's 40, three. And that's a 63, so both pass. Both pass. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Uh, she's like, well, I I suppose the only thing worse than letting you wander around would be to let everyone know that you would come up here and wandered around. So I'm going to go downstairs, and we will we'll immediately do whatever you're doing, and then come downstairs, yes. and not intrude upon our public spaces yet again. I will let no one know what I've done. Your hair mm. looks magnificent. Do not push it. That's <laughs> 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 your horse Oh, Lord. Bones. Sweet, sweet bones. <laughs> sweet bones. Um, Love that Old guy. sweet bones. Yeah. 
All right, so you are free to go into the office. And how has the pub, like, not the public, but the this office changed? Have they already just gotten rid of, like, all of Walter's stuff? Uh, yeah, so you look in, and it's, it's, it, the, the wainscoting, kind of the, the, the structure of the room is unchanged, but they've removed all the furniture. You know, Bolton really trended toward more comfortable and practical pieces. They've gone horribly interesting mm. and uncomfortable. Things that you'd show people, not necessarily use into this office area. I think there's like a small uh, hole of du- in the dust on the wall, mm. like where a frame has been, used to hang for many mm-hmm. years, that uh, fills... Uh, bones with a little sadness. Yeah, it it, it is like the, they have stripped this his skeleton, all of his personality out, and you can still see some of his bones remaining. Mm. Uh, but you see that there are still the wall sconces. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know they have not removed those, and there is one a little small hatch and a key, a keyhole fitting what you're looking for. I turn it. You turn it. Uh, a very well concealed door opens and a small hidden office is revealed uh, in between the bedroom and Mm. the, not quite the scale, uh, in between the bedroom and this office. Uh, And this has been untouched. This is Bolter uh, Willoughby's private study. This is where he truly did his work. Mm. The exterior may have been for guests who did not know him, but this is where anything he kept precious to himself was kept. Um, You see this desk that he always sat at. uh, It really looks like he just left it one day and never came back. You know, inkwell still there, pen on the paper, uh, his small candle, candle robber array, uh, books, still collecting dust, uh, small, you know, kind of oblique skylight letting in light but not revealing the hidden nature to the outside. Um, And you see, I mean, yeah, what what are you looking for specifically? Yeah, I mean, I think first it's like there, this is the only sign left in this estate of mm-hmm. like Bones' friend. And I think there's just like a moment of like personal reflection there where mm-hmm. Bones sort of like breathes in the air and like catches a little smell of his old friend. And like, I think this is the only time he's let himself feel sad a bit about losing his friend. Like maybe wells up, doesn't full cry mm-hmm. or anything. But, um, uh, and I think he's gonna go look for, um, I think he probably sent Bolter letters from mm-hmm. around the world, and I think he's looking to make sure that that collection of letters is still here and potentially take it. Yeah, I'm gonna say, um, give me a spot hidden for the room, but it's pretty easy to find the letters you're looking for. Ooh, 25, uh, which is exactly success for spot hidden. Okay, 25. <laughs> Great. Nice. Okay, a couple of things are gonna happen. Uh, as the dance is swelling to an end, uh, you, standing on the balcony, uh, overlooking the grounds, see off in the distance a bit of a flickering light. It's a little hard to tell, kind of comes in and out. And you see the other people on the balcony sort of reacting to it. And... It's the McCormick finale. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not... It, it, I don't see the birds, but I'm curious. <laughs> uh, there's no sound, uh, and you can swear you feel like a chill in the air, things growing slightly colder. Um, as you're looking around, you find a stack of letters. Mm. Um, wait to open this. Okay. And you find a stack of letters both from you to Willoughby and some that are unsent. Uh, as this shape in the distance grows closer, it revolves, resolves itself into somewhat of a humanoid form. And you can hear a, a hue and a cry start to come up from the guests there. One shouts, it's him! It's Walter! It's it's Willoughby! He's back! He's, it's, it's, the specter returns! Uh, as that shouting is happening, uh, there is, you can hear a, like someone running from the, somewhere in the hallway here, like running uh, kind of away from this side of the house toward the other side of the house. Uh, and then there is a cacophonous cracking and the chandelier from above cracks. In the ballroom? In the ballroom. Oh. And there's enough warning that most of the, the uh, dancers are able to get away, but the chandelier cracks and slowly, and then all at once falls to the ground. Crystal shards sp- spraying everywhere, tearing the silver, uh, silver banners down. Uh, and that is 
how we are going to end oh, this session that's of great. Rose and Romances. That's so good. Oh my god. Thank you for watching. Wow. We will oh return god. and find out exactly what is happening at Redworth Manor. Oh, oh damn. Damn. Get ready to roll for a ghost surreal. <laughs> god damn, god damn. Yeah. Um, I, I will be trying to grab as many of those crystal shards. <laughs> yeah, that was wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, you can catch more on the Twice Rolled Tales YouTube channel, as well as check out all the incredible work these folks are doing. There'll be links below and all of that stuff. Yeah. Fun. There we go. It's Woo! done. Woo! I still haven't met y'all yet. <laughs> <laughs>